Hi, this is Toby at Cuddle, and in this beginner video, I'll walk you through the fundamentals of creating and editing paths in Cuddle. Cuddle uses Bezier curves to represent paths, and the interface is similar to other vector editors. So your path editing skills will transfer to these other programs. Paths are arbitrary shapes and curves. They can be closed, meaning the path loops back on itself, or they can be open, meaning that the path has two endpoints. To create a new path, click the Pen tool in the Canvas toolbar or press P on the keyboard. If you click on the canvas, you'll create points that are connected by straight lines. These points are called anchors. If you hold Shift, your anchor will be constrained by the previous anchor point. If you want to close your path, click on the very first anchor that you created. So this created a closed path, and then I can start drawing another path with the pen tool. If you want to make an open path, you can hit Escape on the keyboard, and that will stop drawing the current path and set you up to start drawing a new path. You can also switch back into the Select tool, and then that will put you in path editing mode. And when you're done editing your path, you can double click the canvas, and then that will put you back out and you can select any of your shapes. To create curved paths, instead of clicking on the canvas, click and drag. When you click and drag, it drops an anchor point where you started the click, and then the dragging pulls out handles. And these handles control the curvature of your path. You can adjust the handles. You can also convert an anchor from an anchor that has handles to an anchor without handles by double clicking it. Or if you want the handles back, you can double click it again. By default, the handles are always in a straight line with your anchor to create a smooth curve at the anchor point. But if you don't want this, you can hold the Option or Alt key while you're dragging a handle. And that will break the constraint that the handles need to be in a straight line with the anchor. If you want to get the handles back in a straight line, you can double click the anchor point. That will reset it. With the Select tool, you can double click on an existing path to edit it. When you double click it, you'll see a spotlight around the path that you've focused in on, and you'll see the anchors, which you can then drag around. You can also drag the handles. And when you're done editing the path, you can double click the background and it will put you back out and you can then select shapes again. So I'll show a few more things you can do while you're editing a path. So I'll double click this. So you can drag around anchors, or you can use the arrow keys to nudge your anchors. You can also do the same with handles.
You can also select segments and drag them around. If you hold the Option key while dragging a segment, it will bend the segment. You can also delete segments by hitting delete or the backspace key on your keyboard. So by deleting the segment, that breaks up the path into two paths. If you want to insert more anchor points on a path, you can double click the path on a segment and that will insert an anchor wherever you double clicked. If you want to insert anchors off of the endpoint of an open path, you can select the endpoint and then switch to the pen tool. And now you're adding more anchors off of that endpoint. I'll close with a few tips. So any shape that you bring out uh, from the left sidebar is not a path, it's an instance of a component, which means that it you know, might have parameters. So this polygon, I can change the number of sides. The text, I can change the text or change the font. And so if I want to edit these as if they were paths, what I need to do is I select it and then go to Edit, Convert to Paths. This turns the polygon into a path, and then I can double click it and edit it as if it's a path that I made with the pen tool. This is a destructive operation, so that means that I wouldn't, for example, be able to then select this and change the number of sides of the polygon. Once it's a path, then you can only edit it like a path. Likewise for the text, right now I can change the text, but if I go to edit, convert to paths, then I can now edit it like a path, but I wouldn't be able to change what letter it is. So the second tip is when you're making lots of changes um, with a path, I like to turn off the geometry snapping. So by default, this is on. And geometry snapping is great if you want to you know, snap to certain places. You can drag a point to a certain place, and it will snap there. But I find that when doing sort of meticulous operations with paths, especially freeform ones, I like to turn this off. Um, so then I can really like do little tweaks and um, I don't have snapping getting in the way. So if you're doing little tweaks to your paths, I recommend turning off geometry snapping. And then when you're done, you can turn geometry snapping back on again. Um, the third tip is try to use as few anchors as possible. So, for example, this S, it has a lot of anchors that are being used to create this curve. And so if I wanted to change this curve, you know, I'd have to move a bunch of anchors. And it makes it uh, difficult to edit paths. So... As you get better with the pen tool and path editing, I would encourage you to try to make your paths with as few anchors as possible, um, because then it makes it a lot easier to tweak your curves after the fact if there are fewer anchors. And the third tip, uh, sorry, I think this is the fourth tip, is sometimes I like to make paths by 
if I'm making a curved path, I might make it as if I were drawing sort of the the straight version of it first. And then once I have the basic shape, I'll add the curves by double clicking on the straight anchors and moving these around. And then I'll also use the segment bending. So if you hold Option or Alt, then you can change the make a segment into a curve like that. Um, so I find that this is sometimes a handy way to work with paths. Well, that's it. I hope this was helpful and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching.